get you out of the land. Then you will know that I'm the Lord your God who brought you out from under the yoke of the Egyptians. Pause. Think about that. You, I'm going to do all these things and get you out of the land, and you're going to have to believe and trust that that's me doing it. Otherwise, the next two promises don't come true straight away or for you. Verse 8, I will bring you to the land I swore with an uplifted hand to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. This is God saying, do you know what? I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. We have very similar promises from God. Why is there seven I wills? Possibly numbers are significant in the Bible. Possibly because there's seven days of creation. And God says, do you know what? I'm the originator and author of all things. And as surely as you see the days of creation all around you, as surely as you're going to live in this promised land, that just seems pie in the sky for the last 450 odd years or whatever it's been, probably 500 odd years. But these promises are ours too. He will bring us out of, of slavery, of this captivity to sin. He will be our God and he will bring us into his promised land, his possession. We have to trust him as we go. So let's quickly finish up one more insight. Moses reported all this to the Israelites, but they put their fingers in their ears and they poked their tongue out at him and they said, no, nah, we're not doing this with you. We're not going with you. This is discouraging. This is harsh. We're not in this any longer. And so what does the Lord do? Something incredibly crazy. A bit rude to say it that way. He says to Moses, now that you haven't got the Israelites on your side, I want you to go back to Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and let the Israelites go out of this country. But Moses said to the Lord, if the Israelites will not listen to me, why should Pharaoh listen to me since I speak with faltering lips? Moses is coming back to that old thing again. I've got faltering lips, I can't talk. He said it before to God. He's going to say it to, again at the end of chapter 6. This is our last verse for today, though. Do you know, one of the, the as we look back in hindsight, one of the greatest leaders of all history was a terrible speaker in his own mind. We've got a mission from God to tell people about Jesus Christ and his love. That, that if we trust in him, that, that God will give us and seal us with his Holy Spirit so that we can have an eternity with him. And we go, man, I've got faltering lips. Oh, so did Moses. What's the point here? What, why are we finishing on this sentence? It's not the messenger. It's the message and the person of the message that matters. Hey, it's, it's, it's this message of freedom. And for us, it's this message of freedom from, from a life without knowing God. We might have faltering lips, but God is with us. He will, he will, he will. He's our Lord, he's our Lord. Trust in him, take your problems to him, and live with him in community. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this, this incredible story um, that, that shows us another uh, picture of who you are. You're so gracious and kind and gentle, Lord. Oh, we love that. That's you could you could have just wiped Pharaoh out or wiped Moses out or wiped the Israelites out, but you kept going, offering opportunities, chances, Lord. We thank you so much for the second chances that you give us. Lord, we'd like another opportunity to talk about your goodness with each other now and during the week, Lord. Help us to trust in you always. Help us to learn as Moses learned all through his life. In your holy name. Amen. I just